Hey, I've decided to remarry your sister. Why would you say something like that? My husband decided to leave me and remarry my sister. Behind that decision was the luxurious house worth around $3 million left by our deceased father. My sister, who has always taken this opportunity to flaunt her competitive with me, relationship and proudly said, This magnificent house, and even your husband, Lisa, are all mine now. Is that so? Well, it's best to move on. I won't hold back either because there are still some unsolved mysteries about that house. They still don't understand what it truly means to inherit this house. My name is Lisa and I'm 28 years old. Since graduating from college, I've been working hard at my father's company. I've worked diligently to live up to my father's expectations. However, about a year ago, I got married and now I'm enjoying a happy married life. The husband's name is Ken, age 33. We met at a group date organized by a mutual coworker. We hit it off surprisingly well, and after a six-month dating period, we decided to get married in a hurry. People often express their surprise, saying, I never thought Lisa, who seemed an interested in love, would ever get married. However, the surprise wasn't just on other people's part. I was surprised too. Getting married after just six months of dating was unthinkable for the old me. But I was smitten at Ken from first sight and completely captivated by his charm. He was also an ordinary office worker like me, but there was a considerable difference in our salaries. I struggled with the salary gap, and even after we got married, I continued to hide my own salary from him. Therefore, he was completely unaware that my father was the president of the company and that I was expected to succeed him in the future. I intended to tell him everything eventually, but I didn't feel the time was right yet. I planned to reveal all when our relationship of trust deepened a little more. And then, one day, as usual, I was working at the office when I received a summons from my father, the president. Normally, I rarely met with my father directly, so this summons felt somewhat unusual. However, it was rare for my father to call me out, and I thought that something important must have happened, so I headed to the president's office. After knocking on the door and getting permission to enter, I found my father waiting inside with a slightly sad expression on his face. Dad. I mean President Smith. Did you need to see me? It's okay, Lisa. Just talk to me as your father right now. So, is there something wrong, Dad? Actually, there's something I need to explain to you. Explain? What do you mean? It's about the company. I've decided to make you the president. I've been thinking that we need to talk about this someday. Uh, now. My first emotion was confusion about why he needed to talk about this now. Sure, I had considered taking over my father's company in the future, but why bring it up now? Our family has been through more than 10 years since my mother passed away in an accident. During that time, my father raised my sister and me by himself. Especially my sister, Mia, who was quite a handful during her rebellious phase, even running away from home. She still doesn't have a regular job and is making a living off part-time jobs. My father is still trying to help her get her life on track. My father is only 55 and there are still 5 years left until his retirement. Moreover, he just spent around $3 million to build a luxurious new house a few months ago. Despite all this, I don't understand why he's rushing this discussion now. He often joyfully talked about living in that place with his precious friends someday, which was my dream and hope as well. So seeing him with such a sad expression now was unexpected for me. It's becoming clear right in front of my eyes that he is trying to entrust the company to me. Anxiety engulfed my heart. The fear that my father might soon leave us filled my chest. To ease this feeling, I asked him with a prayer-like feeling in my heart, Dad, why all of a sudden? I do think about taking over your company someday. But isn't this too soon? It's never too early. The sooner, the better. But here is a compilation of documents about our company. Please take a look when you have time. Understood. As I quietly agreed, my father said, thank you, with a smile. That smile was undoubtedly that of a father, not of a company president. Despite feeling a sense of discomfort about my father's words and actions, I couldn't probe any for there and left the president's office. Although my father didn't mention anything specific, it somehow planted even more anxiety in my heart. Later that night, when I got home, my husband had already returned. I decided to tell him everything about this issue that I couldn't handle alone. I had this talk today. He widened his eyes in surprise at my words. Wait a minute, your father is the president of Smith's company. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry for keeping it a secret until now. No, that's fine, but why all of a sudden this talk about taking over? I don't know either, but Ken, you know about it, right? 
My father just bought a house a few months ago. Ah uh, yeah, that huge house, right? I knew he was rich, but that place really shocked me. Well, of course. That house cost $30 million. $30 million. Seeing my husband's shocked expression at the unimaginable amount of our usual lifestyle, I nodded slightly. The dad who talked so happily about the future is suddenly trying to hand over the company to me. It's definitely strange, right? I have a bad feeling about this. No, no, you're thinking too much. Besides, that house will be ours one day, right? No, I don't want to talk about that right now. This is amazing. I'm really excited. Living in a $30 million mansion one day, we're so lucky. Hey, Ken. My husband's eyes were shining, and he seemed too excited to listen to what I was saying. Even though I originally wanted to talk about my father's situation, Ken was only thinking about the mansion. I wanted him to be concerned about my father's state. Why is our conversation drifting so far off topic? Confused by my husband's reaction, I was left holding my anxiety. But perhaps, as my husband said, I might be thinking too much. I was worried about my father and there were moments when I couldn't find peace of mind. Months passed and the days of anxiety continued. One morning, the clock pointed to 7 o'clock. That's when I received a call from the housekeeper. Shocking news came from the other end of the phone. According to the housekeeper, she started work as usual at 6 o'clock and found my father collapsed in the hallway. The ambulance was called, but my father had already passed away. I'm sorry for the late contact. The housekeeper's voice was trembling over the phone. Unable to withstand the news, I raised my voice and cried. Deep sorrow enveloped me as my father left this world suddenly. Upon further conversation, it was revealed that my father had received a terminal diagnosis a few months ago. Noticing his poor health, he underwent medical examinations and was told that the cancer had metastasized throughout his body, leaving no room for surgery. While receiving treatment, the tumors did not shrink, and in the end, he decided to entrust the future to me. Ironically, the cause of my father's death was not cancer, but a heart attack. The doctor said that if it wasn't for the attack, my father might have been able to live a little longer. Faced with this fact, emotions other than frustration welled up inside me. I decided to meet with my sister Mia to tell her about the cause of our father's death. She arrived 30 minutes late to our meeting spot. When I told her about our father's death, she showed a surprised expression for a moment, but then quickly smiled broadly. Does that mean all of dad's inheritance belongs to us now? What? What are you talking about in this situation? Does that mean we get that house too? You have a job, big sis, so you don't need that house, right? So give it to me. I'm appalled. How can you talk like this just after dad has died? Mia's point was indeed true. Our father had always hated hiding money for himself and would donate most of his income to children's homes and refugee support overseas. That's why I was a little happy when he built that mansion. It was a moment when I felt that my father was finally willing to spend money for himself. However, Mia was selfish, only seeing our father's property. Far from mourning our father's death, she was only thinking about her own gain. That's why I made a decision. I decided to make her understand firsthand that reality is not so sweet. The mansion was purchased just a few months ago and long-term loan payments still remain. Our father might not have understood how hard the payments would be when he bought it. I told my sister that I had decided to renounce my inheritance rights. I'll give that house to you, I told her and she clapped her hands in joy. Yay! Thank you, big sis. This $3 million mansion is all mine now. Isn't this like getting something for nothing? I was astonished at my sister's obsession with money, mixed with anger and a bit of sadness. I had never imagined she would try to take advantage of our father's death in this way. I was disappointed with her way of thinking and attitude, fearing that our family bonds were breaking. A few days later, our father's funeral was held, but my sister did not show up. This fact alone angered me, but an even more unpleasant event was waiting. My husband began to talk about my father's inheritance. When can we start living in that house? Surprised, I could only raise my voice and say, what? My husband continued. Because it's the luxurious house left by your father-in-law? Mia didn't have a very good attitude towards him, right? Inheriting the $3 million mansion is of course for Lisa, right? He seems to be the type who's obsessed with money as well, and I felt uncomfortable discussing our father's property right after his death. I coldly told my husband, Mia will live there. I'm not inheriting anything. My husband was surprised and said, What? Hey Lisa, what are you talking about? I argued back firmly, explaining. Mia said she wants to inherit it, so I gave it to her. 
My husband still wasn't convinced and said, What the heck is that? You're joking, right? Hey, Lisa, you're lying, aren't you? He said as if begging. However, I remained silent. My husband dropped his shoulders in disappointment and left the house. From that day on, he never returned home. Despite my sending messages, there was no reply from my husband. The messages were read, but he remained silent. It was hard to understand his intentions or feelings, but he probably had some sort of dissatisfaction or doubt about me giving that magnificent house to her. Ever since he found out that my father was the president of a company, my husband changed. Pursuing money and a luxurious lifestyle seemed to have become his top priority. It was as if my father's death and our family bonds were left behind somewhere. However, the unpleasant events continued to unfold. When I returned home after several days, I found my sister Mia sitting next to my husband. My husband looked at me and made a shocking statement. I've decided to remarry with your sister here. He declared. I was at a loss for words and asked, what? What are you talking about? He continued with a smirk. Because if I stayed married to you, I wouldn't have a chance to live in that mansion, would I? Ha ha. I said with a mix of astonishment and anger, are you serious? You're divorcing me for that house. My husband picked up the divorce papers and slammed them on the table. His section was already filled out, showing his seriousness. I was stunned and stood there in disbelief. And then my husband laughed smugly and said, Yeah, that's right. Ha, ah, here, these are the divorce papers. Sign them, will you? The words that came out of Mia's mouth were like a cold blade piercing my heart. Sorry, big sis. But it can't be helped, right? Ken chose me, not you. I was shocked and filled with anger as I pressed her, are you serious about this? She answered confidently with a smug smile on her face. Of course. The mansion and Ken, they're all mine. I finally managed to beat Big Sis. At that moment, it felt like the demon that had been sleeping inside me awoke. Yes, if that's how it's going to be, I decided to become a demon myself. I planned to inherit the house without them knowing and confront them with reality. There was still a considerable mortgage on the house, and with Mia and the others' income, continuing the payments would be challenging. The flames of my revenge grew stronger. This is the culmination of all my hard efforts until now. Because I've always worked hard beside my father, trying to meet his expectations, I alone am capable of executing this revenge plan. I took a deep breath and stared coldly at my husband and sister. Their faces showed surprise and confusion. I resolutely said to them, I understand. We should get a divorce, right? My husband seemed to accept my determination, though he looked surprised. What, what's this? You're surprisingly submissive. Mia's voice reached my ears, filled with anxiety. She said, Really? Big sister, do you really understand your situation? I responded, albeit a bit delayed, I understand. But in exchange, I'll be taking over dad's company. That's not a problem, is it? Ken, my husband, also interjected, I don't really care as long as I get that house. I don't know much about management or anything. I'll leave the company to you, big sister. Mia continued, and I felt a sense of relief wash over me. Really? That's great then. Regarding the inheritance, let's settle it like this. I'll prepare the documents and bring them later. Afterward, I made the decision to end my cohabitation with my husband and packed up my belongings. Honestly, I didn't have any special feelings for the spacious apartment we rented with his income. I moved to a monthly rental apartment and proceeded with the divorce procedures. After gathering all the necessary documents, I visited Mia and Ken again a week later. Could you sign these necessary documents? I asked, presenting the inheritance-related documents. Mia signed without hesitation. Then she came across the documents related to our father's house. It stated, if there is a mortgage, the new owner must continue to pay it off. However, Mia and the others overlooked this statement. Their hearts filled with anticipation for the luxurious $3 million mansion. Keeping a calm demeanor was difficult. They were oblivious to the severe punishment awaiting them due to their rash actions, but I was well aware. That's why I had to suppress my laughter, leaving them as they were, and departed. About a month had passed. I was immersed in my work in the company president's office when my smartphone rang. The caller was my ex-husband, Ken. Has he finally realized it? I wondered, answering the call. Hello, yes. Hey Lisa, what the hell is this all about? What's wrong? Why are you so panicked? Are you having trouble with the mortgage payments? So you knew all along. You knew and you still let Mia inherit that house, didn't you? Of course, I did. 
You're too naive, thinking about inheritance right after dad died without even warning. What? Don't mess with me. This has nothing to do with me, right? Do something about it. Nothing to do with you. Anger surged within me at my ex-husband's words. My blood pressure skyrocketed and I couldn't help but raise my voice. Don't mess with me. You're just the same as Mia. Did you mourn even once when my father passed away? Did you comfort me even once? You were only thinking about that house. You immediately asked when you could live in that house, didn't you? I haven't forgotten. No, that's not it. I didn't mean to. Then what is it? You want me to believe the words of a scumbag who divorced me for a $3 million mansion and married my sister. That's not something a normal person would do. Both you and Mia are just lowlifes. For money, you wouldn't choose the means, the worst kind of people. Calm down, Lisa. How can I calm down? Whether you guys go to hell has nothing to do with me. Reflect on your wrongs and suffer for the rest of your lives. Wait a minute, Lisa. Cutting off his voice, I unilaterally ended the call. Cutting off communication with them allowed me to distance myself from them. Afterward, they were unable to make the mortgage payments and had to let go of the mansion my father left behind. Though they found a buyer after deducting the mortgage from the sale price, they suffered a loss of about $500,000. Naturally, this debt burden is now weighing heavily on Mia, my sister. However, since Ken also signed as a co-signer during the change of house ownership, this debt has effectively become a joint debt between the two of them. It's predictable what they may have to sacrifice in the future to repay the debt. However, I have no sympathy for them. I believe this is a just retribution for them underestimating my father's memory. With sense of mission I imposed upon myself, I am determined to protect this company that my father founded. My wish is that one day, I can meet my father in heaven and report to him. I protected the company. And being recognized by my father in heaven saying, you did a wonderful job, is my biggest dream.